must begin to trust their own government more than they either fear or trust the extremists. Well, the situation in Afghanistan is very rough, and that's why we have, and I agree with the president, um, instituted a policy where we send significantly more troops. There's a question as to whether there will be even 10,000 more sent at the end of this year. We just changed the command structure and the commanders. Uh, it's going to be a long, hard slog. There will be increases in casualties, unfortunately, this summer as we move south in Afghanistan. I'm happy to say that dire predictions about Pakistan have not come true. The Pakistani military is starting to act in a more uh, effective fashion. The people uh, it is in some parts of Pakistan, and I know Afghanistan as well, have rejected the Taliban and even fought against them. It's going to be a long, hard, tough slog and things are very difficult there. We have an election in Afghanistan coming up this summer, and we want to make sure that that is a free and fair election. But it's, uh, look, but no one should think that this is going to be easy. It's going to be extremely difficult, but we cannot allow Afghanistan to return to a base where uh, radical Islamic elements are able to launch attacks on the United States and our allies. Alfredo is joining us next from Hillsborough, California. Good morning on the Independent Line with Senator John McCain. Uh, uh, this is an honor to, to uh, uh, talk to you. Um, you're the main reason why I'm, I'm an independent. Uh, family all Democrats, so it's kind of hard when I go to that function and get big arguments. <laughs> Thank um, you. I respect you so much. Uh, being, a mate, uh, being a Freemason now, I can't tell you how hard it is to go to lodge meetings and hear the stuff I hear, even not as top secret as you guys talk about, but just stuff, you know, we, we, we talk about in the, in the rooms. If you would have stuck to your guns with the taxes and immigration, you would have won. I, it's from the heart. You would have won. You would have won. I, I respect Obama. I don't respect a lot of what he's doing, but living in Hillsborough with a bunch of liberals, it's hard. But if you would have stuck to your guns, I, you're the main reason why I became independent. You're the main reason. We saw you, my, my, my fiance is a tribal member, and we saw you fighting for her her family in uh, Florida down there in front of these people, guilty money from her, her, these, people, these Native Americans, $80 million, do nothing, promising. We, we, that's the main reason why I became independent. Thank you, Alfredo. Well, thank you, Alfredo. Thank you for those kind words. and. Uh, it's pretty clear that some of your frustrations are felt by many Americans and uh, that's we are seeing a dramatic increase in the number of people who are registering as independent voters. Thank you, Alfredo. Uh, do you tweet? Do you go to Twitter? Oh, yeah. yeah, all the time. All the time. All you the do? Time. Yeah, and by the way, it's Twitter, that uh, Facebook and YouTube that have uh, had an incredible impact in this Iranian uh, situation. Uh, there's a Tehran uh, uh, Twitter that uh, I forgot. Yeah, Iran elections. Yeah, that uh, and one is Tehran also. Um, it's it's really interesting to hear that uh, read the twitters from the streets of uh, Tehran, particularly when things were really at its height a couple of days ago. You saw what happened in the late 1970s. What ultimately do you think is going to happen in Iran? Oh, I think ultimately that that democracy will prevail. I think that the people of Iran have uh, clearly indicated their dissatisfaction with the status quo and the radical clerics uh, tight control of that country. This is a very old country and a very old culture and a very sophisticated one. Uh, people are not going to stand for that forever. I think you can draw a parallel between when the Prague Spring was repressed and the Polish workers were repressed. And by the way, Ronald Reagan stood up for them right away, as did liberal Democrats as well as conservative Republicans. Um, uh, but forever, this this governing body and this way of the Iraq Iran is being governed is discredited. They're totally discredited in the eyes of the world. So I think over time you will see um, a, a significant change in Iran. Now, 
it, it, how long it would take and, and under what circumstances are impossible to predict. But those young people who sacrificed their lives and their physical well-being in the streets of Tehran, their legacy will be fulfilled. It's just a matter of when. We have a political tweet from David Ryan, who himself is a candidate for Congress, wondering whether you will run for president in 2012. No. <laughs> I've had my, <laughs> uh, I've had my uh, chance twice, and um, it's humbling, and I'm so grateful to have had the nomination of my party. But uh, it's, it's time for a new generation, and we've got a new generation of Republican leaders out there, and I'm confident we're going to rebound. I can remember when, when, every, when the pundits said that one party or the other was done. That's the great thing about American politics. We're going to come back. Next is Tim on the phone from Cartersville, Georgia. Good morning. Right. Tim, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I guess I'm coming back to, first of all, I got a lot of admiration for Senator McCain. I supported you greatly in the campaign. And, um, but I do have to bring us back to health care. Uh, I have to agree with the, the lady that said for $5,000 we can get uh, health care for a family. And I know from here in Georgia in a family of four, a $5,000 um, credit on our income taxes would be very difficult to uh, actually put adequate quality health care on a family of four. Having done that myself, uh, where I spent over $12,000 a year for a family of four uh, to insure them adequately, um, that's our biggest problem. And I just want to address that my wife is in the health care industry, she's a doctor, and I see the problem as more the insurance issue of not being able to pull smaller companies. We have a small business and we can't afford to put adequate health care or provide adequate health care for our employees of three. Tim, what's your it, business? Uh, we actually have a dental office. My wife's a dentist. And what I'm, what I would like to see instead of a single uh, provider is actually a maybe some guidelines in the insurance industry where we're able to take small businesses and go abroad, across state lines and pull those individuals or those smaller businesses into a larger pool to bring our health care costs down. Well, Ken, we're, we're in agreement. To start with, um, the $5,000 refundable tax credit is for every family in America, and there's 47 million Americans who are uninsured. If you have the kind of competition that you are talking about, I understand there's 1,300 different health insurance companies in America, and they would all compete across state lines, which they can't do now, and bring the cost of health care down and the inflation associated with it. I would imagine, if you're still on the line, you're fairly uh, Satisfied, about 70% of the American people are satisfied with the health insurance they have. They're just worried about affording it. And uh, I, I am convinced that if you keep the cost of health care down, provide competition, you can give every American family the opportunity to have at least some minimum health care. And again, I, if you'd, I'll be glad to send you the statistics. $5,000 refundable tax credit for a family will give, be enough to give Americans a minimum health insurance policy, which they can then expand if they want to with their own money. But the fact is that we've got to give every American family, in my view, at least a $5,000 refundable tax credit so at least they can go out and shop around for a minimum that would handle catastrophic and others. So. It's all part of a large pro uh, trying to address the problem of the in cost of health care. And again, Ken, if you're not satisfied with your health insurance that you have today, and I would imagine that you are, then I think you ought to be able to go someplace and get the health insurance that you, best suits you and your families. That's part of this proposal. Prevention, wellness, fitness, treatments, on outcome-based treatment. It's a whole mosaic of... Uh, of a proposal, but to say that the government health care, government run health care system, with you and your wife being obligated to provide health insurance for your employees at a certain level, otherwise you would pay a fine 
of some kind is not my vision for health care in America. Let me conclude with two personal questions. This is from John who said in this tweet, how does